Hello, and welcome to episode 9 of season 2 of Unlimited Opinions. I'm Adam Bishop. I'm Mark Bishop. And this time we are, of course, reading Jake Jackson's Myths and Legends about World Mythology, and this time we're covering giants and early Chinese mythology. Uh, this is a very interesting chapter, very short chapter, only two pages, so we'll see if this episode so, is also short. So far, my favorite chapter for that reason. Really? Yeah, that's <laughs> fantastic. So glad you're so enthusiastic about these things. It's packed full of uh, giants, uh, uh, Chinese giants. Did you say that again? Chinese giants. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's Chinese giants. I don't think that's right. I think you were trying to make me do a fake Chinese accent. <laughs> that's exactly what you suggested at the start of this episode. And I, I, I don't. I don't think that's. Uh, I did not say any such thing. I think you said that exact thing, and I think if anybody has listened to those episodes, I don't think it would surprise them. <laughs> that is off the record. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So we start off with the story of Xing Tian, the headless giant. Now, Xing Tian was a very ambitious giant who was an official of the fiery emperor. But when Qi Yu conquered the south, he quickly, excuse me, he quickly switched allegiances. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say. And so he began following Qi Yu. And when he heard of the deaths of Qi Yu's men at the yellow emperor's hands, he wanted nothing more than to challenge the emperor face to face in combat. So Xing Tian took his axe and shield and traveled to the emperor's palace but the, palace, the emperor knew of the giant's approach, and he met him head-on, and they battled for two days, traveling all along the mountain ranges until they reached the Long Sheep Range. Here, the yellow emperor caught the giant off guard and sliced off Xing Tian's head. And so it says here, reading from the book, A terrifying scream escaped the gaping, bloody mouth of the giant as his head began to topple forward, crashing with a loud thud to the ground and rolling down the hill like a massive boulder. Mm. So Xing Tian was furious, and he lashed out wildly, causing destruction, and the Yellow Emperor grew worried that he would find his head. And so he sliced the mountain open beneath the severed head, causing it to fall down, and then he reassealed the mountain over the head. Xing Tian searched for his head for 10,000 years, and he eventually adapted to use his chest for eyes and his navel as a mouth in his search to find his missing head. Yikes. Yes, that was a very intense story there. A very short story, but very gruesome. Yeah, I think the description could have been funnier, you know, with him trying to traipse about the uh, countryside looking for his giant head. Yes, you're right. That could have been a lot funnier. With his nipples, his eyes, and his navel for a mouth. Yes. I don't know why you would want to make that a funny thing. But... Oh, I think it could be funny. And I think that his mouth would then go, hello, which is a Seinfeld reference. You ever is seen it? that episode? I don't think I have. Yeah, so Jerry dated a girl. And uh, he said her, her uh, I forget how he, he, he started on this path, but he, he envisioned that her, her navel uh, made an expression like, hello. <laughs> so you heard it here first. Seinfeld took inspiration from early Chinese mythology in the Must story have. of Xing Tian, the Headless Giant. Yes. And he's going, hello, where's my head? Yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> What's the significance of this? I guess it's maybe an explanation of a mountain range or something. Mm-hmm. Or I was going to ask. I was going to ask you if you had any ideas yourself. Uh, that was the only thing. That was you the could only thing of. you could think of. What is the thing that you would think? I don't know. I guess it'd be the similar thing. Um, tell, tell us your think. Or avalanches, maybe. Um, oh, yeah. You know, wind going through the mountains. You know, that's a can be a strange sound. That's mm-hmm. the giant screaming, searching for his head. What's the movie that has the guy that has his head cut off and he has to find it and he keeps kicking it with his feet? I do not know. And it's yelling at him. No, over here, you idiot. Oh, robots? No, it's the, not a robot. Yeah, it is. There is that is a, an exact scene in the movie Robots. Robots? With the red robot and he loses his head and it's, he's kicking it around. Maybe that is that one. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a good movie. That's, that's a very good funny. movie. Yes. Mm-hmm. See? Yes. You make this funny. Speaking of uh, searching for things, you know, yeah. we had an exact scenario ourselves this morning uh, when you lost the keys to the. I don't the, think we, we need to. Share. We don't need to share this. We don't need to share this story. I thought it was a very funny story. <laughs> well, it's only funny how it worked out. Yes, that's true. So uh, you were very angry for a very long time. You didn't even see the most of it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> well, so well to our listener out there, uh, I took the dogs for a walk, a little short walk at the local park with uh your youngest brother yes and um somewhere along the way i lost my key my key fob to the car the van it's a beautiful van i love it um <gasps> very very practical it's very a 2000, dented 2014 very dirty chrysler town and country 
dented, dirty minivan. Yeah, it's, it's great for taking the dogs places. Mm-hmm. And so I realized when I got back to the van, I lost the key. Mm. And um, and so then I set upon a search for the brief path we took through the the uh, park. And your youngest brother was of no help whatsoever and was indignant that he would assist me in trying to find the key so that we could actually get home or mm-hmm. do anything later that day. And so I became uh, more and more enraged at him and finally just told him to wait in the car. Oh. So then some hours passed. Wait, you picked me up. Yeah, I picked you up. Which was very nice. Picked us up and the dogs. And, and then later in the afternoon, I got some more free time. I made you and your two two younger brothers go to the park with me for the search party with rakes and instruments of destruction. Yeah, I'm sure we looked really, really strange just walking around the park, raking leaves. And well, I think tomorrow we should dirt. go back with those rakes and then create a giant pile of leaves and then jump in them. Okay. I believe we can get it 10 feet tall. There were a lot of leaves. There were a lot of leaves. That's right. Yes. Um, but there was an occasional pile of dog poop, so mm. maybe we shouldn't jump into the leaves. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. But in any event, so ultimately, we did a search through the whole park, the whole path, back and forth, and then I decided to search the van one last time to see maybe if I dropped it inside the van. Mm-hmm. And that was the moment of truth, because suddenly, the doors in the van locked. And you quickly thought of the reason, and you said something along the lines of, everybody look under their feet. You must have stepped on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it turned out I had kneeled, knelt mm-hmm. on the uh, key fob in the grass. Didn't see it. Mm-hmm. I stood up. I still didn't see it. Yeah. It was only until I started moving around. But I, but as, as soon as I saw, thought of this thought, you actually said it out loud, which is, Maybe somebody nearby found it and is just screwing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Been watching us with the rakes all around the park. And he's just sitting there at the key, locking the van. Now that would be funny. That would be funny. As long as he turned it over to us eventually, yes. that, that would have been a really that would have been a funny, funny story. But, but I was I was thinking the exact same thought, and I thought, you know, what's the range on this thing? <laughs> They're start knocking on doors. But the uh, the search for the missing key fob, much like the search for the giant's head. Mm-hmm. Uh, was funny. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> to, to bring it full circle, it was very, very funny. Yeah, my exact thoughts. Only funny because it worked out well. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'd still be angry right now because I would have had it. Because I lost the, I had two key fobs and I lost the first one in a park years ago and I'm too cheap to buy a new one. Yes. And so now I'm stressed out about losing the, the sole remaining one, which would cost me even more money to get a, a replacement. Yes. But to bring it back to, to this story here yes. briefly, um, I just think it's kind of interesting. We'll kind of see this more next episode. Um, but, you know, just how interconnected these stories are and like the recurring characters mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. mixing with new characters. Right. Um, right. I think that's, it's, I don't know if it's necessarily unique, no. um, but it's definitely very interesting um, in mythologies like this where you see stories yeah. kind of branching off of each other right. in that sort of sense, kind of webbing out. It's kind of um, like the Greek gods where they go and interact in different stories and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But I mean, this like directly follows the storyline that we were talking about last week um, because none of this would have happened if he didn't, you know, join with Chi Yu mm, and didn't overthrow the fiery emperor and that sort of thing. So right. I just think it's kind of interesting, these continuing cycles of stories. Isn't that similar to the Greek and Roman gods, though? Um, I haven't read too much Greek. Well, like, uh, it didn't, what, what's his name? Didn't somebody steal the girl and take her down to Hades and then somebody had to go back and rescue her or something? Yes. And, yeah. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of stories like that. Well, I know, but it's not directly building off of a previous, you know, tale. Well, it depends on when you stop telling the tale. Well, I guess that's true. <laughs> you make a good point. It's not the never ending story. <laughs> yes, that's, that's true. Which is... Oddly, not that long of a movie. No, it's not. Mm. Moving on to the next story. Kua Fu Chases the Sun. Watch your mouth. That, that has no resemblance to any... <laughs> well, Kua Fu you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just... It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> All right. Moving along. This, this is, is a two-page thing, and you're stretching it out to a two-hour show. I... Okay. We have only been recording for 10 minutes. All right. So underneath the tallest mountains of the underworld of the north lived Kua Fu, an enormous... Shut your mouth. (laughs) Can I tell this story? Yes. Kua Fu was an enormous giant with three eyeballs and a snake hanging from each ear. But despite his very gruesome appearance, he was a fairly good-natured giant, although not very intelligent. 
He loved the sun more than anything, and he always wished to see the sun never set. So one day he set out to simply catch the sun before it set beneath the horizon. Kuafu then set off in pursuit of the sun, stepping over mountains and rivers, and as the sun turned red just as it was about to set, he reached out and grabbed it. But as he did so, he was overcome with a fiery thirst, and he so drank the entire contents of a stream in the Weishui River, but he still wasn't quenched. And so he traveled 8,000 miles frantically, drinking every body of water that he came across until he came to the lake of Hainan, which he knew would quench him. However, he was overcome with exhaustion and fell, and the last rays of the sun fell on him, melting away his suffering and putting him into an eternal sleep. When the sun rose again, a great mountain was in the place of Kuafu's body, and a thick grove of trees grew on its western side that had the most succulent peaches. This beautiful site was named Kuafu in the giant's honor. Mm. This is kind of a, a weirdly sweet story, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It ended on a very pleasant note, um, which I thought was very interesting with this dude just trying to capture the sun. Right. A dummy. <laughs> <laughs> big yes, giant, thank you. Big giant dummy thinking he'd catch the sun. Yes. If he just stop, it would come back around again. <laughs> well, he didn't want to see it set. <laughs> Yeah, you should catch it. You should you should catch it when it gets there, though. Why would you chase it down the other way? Why don't you weigh and lay in wait? Well, he, it's, it's right close to the horizon. Well, he didn't Scrap want to. It. He didn't want to see it set. Well, I know, but you just you've been he's been living for however many years. Yeah. It happens every day. Mm-hmm. Just wait one more day and snatch it. You're a genius, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> you should have wrote these stories. Well, they'd all be short stories. Uh, yeah, they'd be pointless. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of which, what do you think the point of this story was? What was oh, this trying to tell? I think it's kind of like one of those uh, originating stories about how the mountain range got mm-hmm. there. He's just named after this guy, and you know, he's he's uh, that type of stuff. And and I don't know a lot about China uh, or their uh, history, but I I believe they've had a, a long history of devastating floods and droughts. Mm-hmm. You know, c- cyclical uh, that are just horrific especially the floods mm-hmm. and so this kind of explains some of the droughts and that yeah. kind of stuff so I, I kind of i suspect you know i'm not an expert but it's a kind of my opinion a lot of these are just to explain you know the reality of their world how it came to be those kind of formation stories you know mm-hmm. this, this giant and he was trying to catch the sun and then that would explain the drought where he's drinking up all the water yeah and then uh, then there's this it also explains this wonderful mountain range that has bountiful fr- fruit on it. That mm-hmm. It's very succulent peaches or whatever the case may be. Yes. So that's, that's my theory. I don't know what he I think. I think that's a good theory. I have a theory for everything. Yeah, you have unlimited theories. Unlimited, <laughs> you know, unlimited opinions. I, I try. Try. Yeah. I try to keep up with the times. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you do. <laughs> yeah, those are the only two stories in this section, a very brief section. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of interesting to sort of the roles that uh, giants play. Yeah. Um, and these sorts of stories because um, they're not they're not necessarily evil um, mm. at least in some of the stories that we've read in some cases they are pretty evil but um, yeah it's interesting that they're these you know giant creatures you know essentially you know what giant means but and why do they why do you think they have such a fascination with giants as opposed to just more powerful humanoids you know they're they're big yeah I don't know well a lot of cultures have that it's really? not just like who well uh, Norse mythology, for one thing, and so did the Greeks and the Romans in a way. I um, Norse had Thor and that stuff. Well, yes, they but have giant stuff. They're famous, there. famous, yes, famously, the the enemies of all the gods are the giants, the Jotuns. Well, famously, I don't know any of that stuff. Yeah, well, how it, am I supposed to know? That wasn't in the Marvel movies, was it? Yeah, it was. The giants? Yes, Loki's giants. one of them. Loki, Loki is an ice giant. Loki is a well, giant sized dude. Well, yeah, well, giant was used in a bit of a loose way um with the norse people um in, in later adaptations it's especially loose but you know by and large a lot of the the foes that you know thor and the gods face were large giants but they were all of the race of giants sometimes they were small but by and large they were they were big creatures they're giants there were some small giants yeah there were some small giants yes Which means they're just normal sized yes. people well it comes from the the word jotun that's that's the the norse word jotun is related to the word giant because you know, it's... that sounds very similar. Yes. Well, it's... <laughs> they're, 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 well, Jotun is well, a yeah. giant. Well, if you, yeah, it, it is similar. I mean, switch... Jotun and giant. Yes. Switch the J because it's a it's a J J O T U N. Change all the words or all the letters in the word, you get the same thing. Yeah. If you just switch the last two two letters, like or the last two sounds, Jotun to Yont, giant. 
it's, it's, it's related. It's, it's that's linguistically... Like four, that's four it's, steps away. It's linguistically related. They're all related. It's a language. You're, you're stretching it. <laughs> I'm not. That's just true. That's okay. just true. Oh, okay. I'll take your word for it. Okay. And it's your word. You think you made that up. You think Jotun? 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 Jotun. Jotun? Jotun. Yes. But that's... That was frustrating. So so the Norse people have giants. Who mm-hmm. else has giants? Well, I'd say the Greeks and the Romans did with the Titans. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah they did, yeah. That's yeah. Right. It's right. not just unique to the Chinese. There's a lot of giants mm-hmm. everywhere. A lot, of, a lot of overlap, I guess. Mm-hmm. And in like just folk tales itself, not necessarily the mythology. I mean, one of the most famous sort of English or Germanic folk tales is Jack and the Beanstalk. True. One giant. One, one, well, no. There are more. He had, that, he, had a, he had a wife. The giant had a wife. The giant was from like another... Yeah, another, he was from up in the clouds. Land, the giants the lived clouds. in the clouds, yeah. Which never... I, I didn't understand why the giants would live in the clouds because you'd think they'd, they wouldn't be in the sky. Well, my theory, oh. right, oh, you know, right. I don't know if this is necess- necessarily true. I think I've read this somewhere. But, you know, myths kind of, you know, also adapt to cultures and they change over time, of course. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not mm-hmm. set in stone. Um, and so, I, you know, the, the story of Jack and the Beanstalk is a very Germanic story. Um, so a lot of the Germanic stuff... You look very confused. Why is it Germanic? Because it originates with Germanic people, and it's from a region where the Germanic people lived. Oh, okay. It's European, northern. I just thought it was something about the story that was Germanic. No, Northwestern European is sort of Germanic. Um, but, you know, that's... I, I thought there was, like, some reference to later Leiden, Leiden Hoser, or what do you call those those uh, suspender things they wear? Lederhosen? Lederhosen. Lederhosen. Was there any reference I, to that? I don't know. Okay. There could be references to Lederhosen. It's... Okay. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> but you know, uh, you know the Jotuns, you know, in Norse mythology, because Norse mythology is Germanic. The Norse are Germanic people. Mm. Um, you know, they lived in Jotunheim, which is a different realm, sort of, um, and all the realms are connected by the the World Tree, right? Mm. I'm sure you're vaguely familiar with yes, that, at least. Yes. Mm. Um, and so, as you're kind of adapting these stories over time, you know, Jotunheim, you know, this different world, well, it's connected up in the branches of the World Tree. It's up. It's up in the clouds. You know, you got to see the connection there. Okay. That's my personal theory. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but no, you know, probably not. Probably not. Mm-hmm. But I think it makes sense. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for your wonderful insight. That's very helpful. Well, I don't know. What do you want me to say? I don't know. I was thinking that it's kind of similar to how uh, some people tell children that thunder is just the gods bowling. Mm. Like there's giant bowling balls rattling around the bowling alley upstairs. Kind yeah. of similar. Yeah. Well, they're just they're just dancing. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, that's that's true. That is the thing that people say. Yes, yes. They got nothing else. All right. Do you have any other any other comments on the stories of the giants in early Chinese mythology? No, I can't seem to weave in anything about the Rittenhouse trial in this. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. That's a different uh, podcast yeah. altogether. Uh, that's it's the same thing altogether. Yeah. What? what? Did you just quote something? No. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's a short chapter, so a short episode. It's a short episode. Wow. Did I just drop something? You did just drop your pen. No, I didn't have a pen. Did oh, I? you dropped something. Yeah. But yeah, that was episode nine. I think I'll drop my glass. <laughs> you drop your glasses. <laughs> For all of those who aren't, uh, you know, watching this right now or just listening, he just patted his face <laughs> like some sort of animal. Like he's just like, that was just really ridiculous looking for his glasses. Uh, but yeah, that was episode nine of season two of Unlimited Opinions. I've been Adam Bishop. I'm still Mark Bishop. And you can, of course, follow us on Twitter, capital U, lowercase LMTD, and then Opinions with a capital O. And of course, as we said last time, somebody did win our t-shirt competition. So if you're really dying uh, to get that t-shirt that we still have not yet designed, uh, you're too late. I'm, I hate to break it to you because I know we had many, many responders. They will be available for purchase. Will they? Yes. Uh, that's is a statement that we've just made now, apparently. Yes. Well, they pay me enough. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> that's fair. It's a price for everything. All right. Well, this has been Unlimited Opinions. Well, 
It was a short chapter, short yeah, episode. It's a weird, I should have mentioned, they got some weird looking, uh, you know, beasts with the uh, snakes in the ears mm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of strange that. creatures. Yes. Mm. We'll see more strange creatures in the next episode.